Nick, what are you doing with your phone? Oh, hi, Brian. Just trying to collect the gold from it. There's gold in your phone? Yes, sir. Though, not much. You might be surprised how much we still use gold today. Though we don't use it to measure our dollar bills anymore, gold is still super valuable. And gold can even be used in electronics. Gold's nice and malleable, so it's easy to work with and doesn't corrode as badly as other metals. Apparently there's about 0.034 grams of gold in every cell phone. So if there's 0.034 grams of gold in every phone, and there's an estimated 380 million phones in the US, then that means there's almost 13 million grams of gold in US cell phones. Speaking of gold, today marks the 175th anniversary of the first gold found in California, the start of the California Gold Rush. Nine days before the Treaty of Hidalgo Guadalupe was signed, ending the Mexican-American War, James W. Marshall discovered gold at Sutter's Mill. John Sutter, Marshall's employer and the owner of the mill, swore Marshall and his co-workers to secrecy. But in months, the secret was out, and people rushed into California to get rich. By the middle of 1848, three quarters of San Francisco's male population had moved to the mountains. But the largest migration was during 1849, when hundreds of thousands of prospectors moved west to make a fortune. Then the 49ers, as they were called, yep, that's where the California football team got their name, all moved into the state. San Francisco became the center for gold trade and transport. In 1852, gold mining was at its peak, and miners pulled $81 million out of the ground. But after that, gold was harder and harder to get to. By 1857, they only managed to mine $45 million in total, and the rush was over. But the venture brought new, safer mining techniques, plus made work for non-mining Californians easier to find. And for folks working in those fields, you might say the improvements wrought from the California gold rush are worth their weight in gold.